This video is sponsored by Best Buy. The integration of the Apple Silicon to the MacBook Pros made it an almost perfect laptop. When I upgraded from the Intel variant to the 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, I felt the benefit of the upgrade almost immediately. The improved battery life, the better display, they brought back the SD card reader, the MagSafe charger, and they finally removed the touch bar. Everything moved in the right direction. Now we have the M2 Pro and the M2 Max in the MacBook Pros, and although the device looks the same externally, Apple made some decent upgrades internally. They are claiming 20% faster CPU and 30% faster GPU, along with quality of life upgrades such as Thunderbolt 4, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, HDMI 2.1, and an extra hour of battery life. That means 18 hours for the 14 inch and 22 hours for the 16 inch. The best thing is it's priced the same as the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, which is a win considering everything is just getting more expensive. If you already have the M1 M1 Pro or the M1 Max, these specs are not good enough reason for you to upgrade. However, if you've been waiting, I think this is a good time to make the leap. What I have here is the 14 inch M2 MacBook Pro. It has 12 core CPU, 19 core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte of SSD. This configuration feels like the sweet spot between price and value. It's not over spec, but there's still some headroom you can grow into. You're getting the same 12 core CPU as an M2 Max, and you're getting a 19 core GPU, which is closer to the previous 24 core M1 Max. If you guys didn't know, the 24 core M1 Max was outperforming the 32 core M1 Max in the 14 inch chassis. So if Apple's claims are true, then the 19 core should perform pretty well. With this, you also get the 96 watt USB-C power adapter, which takes advantage of fast charging. So you can go from zero to 50% charge in around 30 minutes. These laptops are getting better and better, which makes me think that the high-end options are becoming more unnecessary for most. I got this because I'm curious if this $24.99 mid-tier option is comparable to my 16-inch M1 Max, which was about $3,700. But let's find that out together, and I hope that I can help save you some money. Regardless of which configuration you want to get, these devices cost a lot of money. So I have partnered with Best Buy to tell you guys about their new Upgrade Plus program. I love shopping at Best Buy. Their website is awesome for online shopping. They offer easy curbside pickup, but I personally love going in the store to shop. In fact, I bought my very first MacBook Pro at Best Buy back in 2014, and I've been buying a lot of my gear from them ever since. The Upgrade Plus program is the best way to score a new MacBook Pro. It's an affordable way to get your favorite device today and pay for it over time. Here's how it works. After finding the MacBook that you want, you can see the Upgrade Plus under payment options. In this example, you'll be making payments of about $54 dollars and 15 cents per month for 36 months after 36 months you'll have three options option one you can upgrade to the latest MacBook model by turning in your qualifying MacBook and Best Buy will take care of the remaining balance. Option two, you can keep the MacBook Pro and just simply pay the remaining balance. And option three, you can return it in any Best Buy store. And again, Best Buy will take care of the remaining balance. I believe this is a great way to get your hands on a new MacBook. And the best part about this is I can upgrade to the new MacBook Pro hassle-free. Check out the link in the description to learn more about this offering and thank you Best Buy for sponsoring this portion of the video. The 14-inch MacBook Pro has been a pleasure to use these past few days. The Retina display is nice and bright. Browsing, watching TV shows, and doing everyday tasks are very enjoyable. At three and a half pounds, it's very portable to use in any environment without compromising power whether you are plugged in or not. This thing handles medium to heavy content creation tasks pretty well. Photo editing was comfortable, exporting pictures was fast, and the fact that I did not notice much difference compared to my M1 Max, other than the warning for RAM usage was coming up a lot sooner, which was expected because my 16 inch M1 Max has 32 gigs of RAM. Video editing presented a similar experience. Moving through the timeline, cutting, color grading, applying effects were a breeze, and I experienced no drop frames. This machine handled everything almost perfectly. When I rendered a typical 4K video about 9 minutes long, my 16-inch M1 Max rendered it for 9 minutes and 40 seconds, while my 14-inch M2 Pro rendered it for 9 minutes and 43 seconds. A very small difference, and both laptops had the fans barely on. After that render, my 16-inch M1 Max went from 92% to 83%, and my 14-inch M2 Pro went from 85% to 74% battery left, 
which is about 11% battery used. But since the 14 inch has a 70 watt battery, it actually translates to about 7.7% battery consumed, which is pretty impressive. I will admit that video editing on the 14 inch can feel a bit tight, but despite that, I did not miss my 16 inch all that much. I realized that when I'm not working on my desk, I usually am focusing on a single task anyway. And when I need to do something more intense, that's when I go back to my desk and plug it into my studio display. When doing architecture work, drafting on the 14 inch screen is still pleasant. You might need to zoom in and out more and readjust your window, but it's not bad at all. But if your workflow requires you to have multiple windows open at a time and you plan on working without an external monitor, then I would urge you to consider the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Performance wise, I didn't notice much difference. Moving around SketchUp and working on AutoCAD felt very comfortable. Unfortunately, I don't do much renderings these days for my work, so I didn't have a project ready to test. I did do a Cinebench test where I compared my 16 inch M1 Max with this 14 inch M2 Pro and the results were surprising. The 16 inch M1 Max had a score of 12,261 and my 14 inch M2 Pro had a score of 14,664, which is about 17% better than the M1 Max and 21% better than the base 14 inch M2 Pro based on the scores Max Tech got. Take note that the fans kicked in earlier for the M2 Pro and it hovered around 4,000 to 4,200 RPM and would ramp up to 46 to 4,800 RPM. The noise isn't too bad, but it's definitely audible at the 4,000 range. Another test that I did was a 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme test and the 16 inch M1 Mac got 120.6 frames per second while my 14 inch M2 Pro got 77.7 .7 frames per second and the base M2 Pro from Max Tech got 67.2 frames per second. I think that this configuration is more than enough for most. You get a little bit more power, storage, without paying too much. And if you think you need a little bit more, it's a good starting point to upgrade from. If you want the extra screen real estate, you can upgrade to the same spec 16 inch model for an extra $200. If you think you need a little bit more GPU performance, you can upgrade to the M2 Max with third core GPU. But if you want my opinion, I would upgrade the RAM to 32 gigs first before anything else. But what do you guys think? Are you you thinking of picking up one of these devices and if so which configuration are you hoping to get don't forget to check best buys upgrade plus program in the links below i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up if you loved it subscribe to the channel thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye